Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to change your SATA mode from AHCI to IDE mode for dual booting Windows XP and Windows 8 or Windows XP and Windows 7. Now I'm going to show you how to do this on a virtual box and on a real BIOS. So what you need to do, for this is the virtual box part, so select your virtual machine, click settings, uh, go to storage, and now what you'll see is that you have under SATA is your virtual hard drive. Um, it's in AHCI mode, which w which is what we don't want. AHCI mode is probably the best for your hard drive, for but you need IDE mode for dual booting Windows XP. That's why it's not very good because IDE mode is kind of slow. Just so you know. So what you need to do is that just highlight your con SATA controller and uh, click the Remove Controller button, and then select the uh, IDE controller and. Uh, just down here, click Add Attachment and Add Hard Disk. Choose Existing Disk. Now go go to where your um, virtual machine is stored and find its hard drive. Just click the hard drive. Now it's in IDE mode. Now I'm going to show you how to do this on a real BIOS. All right, now for the real BIOS part. So all you have to do is just uh, find the button that you use to get into your BIOS settings. It's going to say like press F10 or F2 for setup in this case and let me just turn it on and press it alright now once you load in the settings just uh, look around and find your uh, SATA mode setting alright here you can see that I found my SATA mode setting if you're, uh, I do, it's already in IDE mode because I dual booted Windows XP before and I had to do it so um, that's how you, you just switch that to IDE mode if you're having any problems with Windows XP now I'm doing this on a laptop actually because I cannot find the setting on my personal desktop. Now that's because my hard drive probably doesn't support it because it's so old that setting because ID is very legacy um, connection type. So or my CPU doesn't support it. My CPU is kind of old, so that might be the problem. But um, anyway, if you don't have the problem, your hard drive might dynamically switch between the two, so you can install it. But yeah, so if you don't have it, it's either tough luck or you might have it already there, just hidden, and you just have to keep looking. And so yeah, you shouldn't be dual booting Windows XP anyway, like I said. So I'm gonna make it wi uh, Windows 7 and Windows 8 dual boot. So yeah, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and thanks for all the views.